Hello. Oh my gosh. It's been a second since our live. The last one. I'm so excited. Okay. We are waiting for our queen, Jackie Glazer, to join us. Um, okay. So people are coming through. You guys, post your questions in here. Hopefully we'll have time to answer them. Um, oh, I see Jackie has arrived. Let's see. I'm like not good at this. pops up okay guys we're like rolling in i love this is jackie here okay there we go hi hi how are you good how are you okay i gotta move mine back so oh, yeah, yeah. Is that good? it's like yeah i'm like i don't even know how to do this live okay i can see my face i can see your face great okay we got good people to see you in. good to see you awesome happy new year oh. hi carol we love Peril. Um, Peril's, yeah, awesome. Okay, we're talking about a big topic that's really important. Yeah. And we're sitting in the most powerful week of the whole year, which is right between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. And I feel like the world is, you know, needs so much right now, as you know, it's one of yeah. your causes and missions. And, and on a personal level, I think we all need a lot and we wanna have a great year and everyone's going into this year feeling a little bit nervous. Yeah right? This last year has been really challenging to say the least. And just exploring some ideas with you, I think is really helpful to people, for yes. people. Um, I'm speaking to myself as I'm saying them because it's a constant work in progress and we're all working on ourselves all the time. Yeah. But there are ideas that if you haven't heard them, they can be really life-changing. And I think that that's why I love what you do because you're really mission driven like that and really want to help the world in so many ways. And, uh, and that's Thank really you. something to aspire to. That's a real, a real role model is to be someone who's growth oriented, constantly working on yourself. And you really are. Yeah. You know, and, um, and I feel like working with you, if you guys don't know, Jackie has become my official spiritual dating coach. I think we've been working <laughs> together for like two months now. Yeah. And I'm not even just saying this because we're on a live and I'm with you, but really like, I think a lot about the stuff that you've told me and I use it a lot to navigate when I see myself like talking in ways that isn't right and like just like a lot of like inner child work or different kind of dating tools and stuff that you've given we've done group calls she has group calls every week and then we've done one-on-one -on -one coaching so yeah it's been really incredible and i really wanted to do this before yom kippur because i think you know we prayed on rosh hashanah if you guys went to shul and then like yom kippur is like the big whammy and then like you're like i hope god heard my prayers this year so i feel like i want everyone to have the intention of going into shul this like this friday and saturday like using kind of what you're saying here to kind of use it in their prayers and the vibes that they give yeah and and not not people don't realize that we are so much more in control of our experience of reality than we realize right a lot of yeah. people, people feel like i don't know what to do i don't know how to change how i feel and even people go to therapy for a long period of time it depends on the therapist depends on the modality but they can do a lot of understanding and insight about their where they're at, but they won't necessarily change how they feel. Yeah. And so we want to jump into something like some of like, or what if you're stuck with your dating and you just keep having the same experience or the same patterns keep happening or you're attracting the same kind of people, yeah. you know, how could that be? Oh, my light just went off. Oh, well, um, there we go. Can't do anything about the, the light. I think it must be a battery. That's All right. You have to yeah, charge it. I have mine here and I'm like, oh my gosh, I hope it doesn't oh, go out. I know charged it this is new this was from you yeah. you told me about this anyway nice. okay whatever. Oh, whatever you guys Israel can tips it. and lighting tips that's what i'm here for <laughs> it's um, a great combo yeah exactly. okay, okay. We get into the let's first get into question? it and, and guys if you have any questions please yeah. um feel free to tap in the questions or type in the questions um and yeah. we'll we'll get to it Yay. if we can okay first question what gets in the way of manifesting love we do <laughs> we get in the way like everyone, it, like we, we, that's what I'm saying. We don't realize that um, if you're doing all the right things on a practical level, like you're going to events and you're going you're on apps and you're, you're in a database or a network and you're, you're meeting new people and all of that stuff. And you're doing all the right stuff practically. If you're a hermit at home watching Netflix all the time, we got to talk. That's a problem. It's good to get out there. But if you're getting out there, which most people do, it's not about that. The Talmud says we don't see things the way they are. We see things the way we are. Uh -huh. And so we have a lens that we look out into, into life with. And when we look through the lens, we think it's about out there what we're seeing, but it's really about in here because we are the lens. Right. And so if you change that lens, you change 
absolutely everything about how you, what you see and what you experience. And so when I say we get in the way, we may have certain belief systems that are operating underneath the surface that we don't realize. They're not conscious. They're in the subconscious, which is in the back. It's like a back filing cabinet, if you want to think of it. And everything we've ever experienced through life, like intense emotional experiences, positive, negative, get stored there. Because when we're little, we don't know how to process those things. But if those things happen enough over a period of time, even things like, it doesn't have to be serious trauma, although it includes trauma, but it doesn't have to be serious trauma. It can be like, I got kicked out of a group of school, a, a group at school, right? I can't tell you how many women go through that experience of like mean girls, you know, essentially. That's why they did the movie. But essentially, you know, like they're, they're really affected by that as far as their belief systems. Yeah. Um, and so there's two things. One is that my belief system might be sabotaging me right? Which is, we have to, we have to look at that. We can't assume it, but we have to look, we have to do the inner work to say, am I standing in my way? So consciously I want to get married or I want to have love. I want to be in a great relationship, but subconsciously I don't really trust myself to make the right decision or I don't trust myself to know if he's the right one. Like, how would I know that? Uh So they freak out because they don't want to make the wrong decision. It's the biggest decision of your life. If you're going to marry someone. Yeah. So, so, I don't know if I'm going to do that. So I'm not going to be open really to it because I don't want to make that mistake. It's better to be single and a little bit miserable than make that decision and make, uh, make it the wrong decision. So I can't tell you how many people have that fear of making the wrong decision, let's say, as one example of self-sabotage. And because of that fear, they won't be open on some level to a really appropriate match, meaning consciously they want it, but subconsciously they're scared of it. So I'll give you another example, and then they'll keep creating what we call self-fulfilling prophecy, which people may have heard of. For example, I have one client, let's call her Miriam, and she was scared of rejection. Very common, right? Scared of rejection. Yeah. So what did she do? She'd go out on dates, all perfect, and like act perfect, be perfect, smile, but she was really guarded. Yeah. Because of that fear of rejection, she would guard and protect herself. Uh-huh. And then what would happen after the date? The guy would say like, really nice girl, but I just couldn't feel a connection. So I'm going to end it and she'd get rejected. Mm. So the very thing she was scared of is what she created through how she responded to the situation. And we all do this 80% or more of our knee jerk reactions come from the subconscious. Yeah. 80 plus percent of your knee jerk reactions come from our subconscious. So if you don't know what's in there, you're in trouble because it's governing most of your, most of your world. Right now for men, I must say, sometimes they have unrealistic expectations. Yeah. So not just women, but, yeah. but <laughs> did I, did I hear that right? Um, <laughs> but they have unrealistic expectations. What they think they gonna, they need to feel happy is not actually what is necessary. Yeah. Now, of course, both, both sides, like women can also have unrealistic expectations and men also can have, you know, those limiting beliefs around self-worth or self-trust a hundred percent. But those two things are operating most of the time, either I've got to check to make sure my expectations are realistic, meaning what does a great relationship really need to be a great relationship? It's not, it's not a guessing game. We know exactly what a great relationship needs as raw materials between two people to make a great marriage or relationship. We know, right? And we know what the red flags are objectively too. Yeah. So that doesn't have to be a guessing game, but I have to make sure my, real, my expectations are realistic. If I just want the hot model, and I think that's what's gonna get me happiness, you'll be sorely, you know, let down. Right. Um, and, and not only that, but you might have not, not have checked yourself. Again, this applies to both men and women, but you might not have a check, checked yourself. Are you a hot model? Are you, is it compatible with what you want, right? Like we've got to have compatibility right. here on all levels, not just physical levels, but on all levels. Yeah. And, uh, and sometimes people are not realistic about that. So I would say two things, real, being realistic and the self-sabotage that exists at the subconscious level is really what gets in the way the yeah. most. Yeah. So two things upon that. So like, like I had a friend, for example, who like, you know, the guy didn't follow the rules. Like he didn't confirm a date at the time that it should have. And like, he did like all of these things, like at the time he wasn't looking for something serious. So when she would ask me for advice, I'm not an expert, but I'm like, he does like, don't go out with him anymore. She ended up marrying this person. So I know this is an exception to the rule, but how do you know when to like drop someone? Cause they're not treating you the way you deserve. And when you're like, wait, but maybe I should, cause she was like, I don't want to give him up. Obviously we get all that way if we like, like someone. Right. Does that make sense? That's awesome. Yeah. 80, 20 rule. Uh 80% should be good 
compatible, aligned, you like each other's company, you're attracted, you communicate well, values are aligned, going in the same direction. Compatibility, 20%, there's differences, there's disagreements, there's challenges. Right. The other thing is when someone does something wrong, like or rude or lacking in sensitivity or something yeah. like that, we want, we have to, what people tend to do is like, oh, that's red flag, I'm out of here, right? Like at the drop of a hat. No, yeah. because those things are gonna happen a million times in a relationship, right? Not red, big red flags. People call orange and yellow flags red flags all the time, right. but they're not red flags, right? So side, side note, we can do another live on red flags if you want. But essentially what we wanna do is we wanna see how someone's going to show up when I communicate. So, if, so let's say someone does something you're uncomfortable. You wanna say, you know, I know you didn't realize it, but that really made me feel uncomfortable when you did X, Y, Z. And now the, the most important thing is to see how they respond when yeah. you say that. Yeah. So people, people opt out too early. I'm gonna, I'm out of yeah. here. Rather than actually, let me see how he responds or she responds. Uh -huh. Let me bring it up. And let me see how they respond because that's going to tell me more about this person and about the relationship than anything else. Yeah. And I just encourage you all to stay in it. By the way, I had a terrible date with my dad, my, with my dad, with my, gosh, Freudian slip, with my husband. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, dad. Yeah. Um, right, with my husband. Um, so second date, we misunderstood each other about something. And it was like really kind of awkward and horrible. And we both said later that if we were younger and less experienced in a way in, in knowing ourselves, like we would have kind of ended it there. Yeah. But because we were older, a lot older, and we said, you know, we both thought that to ourselves, like, let's see how we deal with this conflict. Yeah. And we talked about it and it was resolved pretty quick. And we said, okay, let's, I'd still like to get to know you, me too. Great. And we said, this is what it triggered in me. He goes, this is what it triggered in me. And I kind of took it this way. And I said, I kind of took it that way. And we said, oh, it makes total sense. Like, that's not what I meant. I'm so sorry. And boom, it was done. And we moved on. And that was really good. That was really positive. That actually ended up becoming a positive building block in the relationship that we had that experience. So yeah. I like it when that happens. I always say to my clients, like, that's real. Because the yeah. other question I get asked the most is, how do I get out of that artificial, superficial loop right. on a date of the small yeah. talk? Everyone can't stand it. It's so draining. You're looking at no. your watch under the table. How long do I have to be here and get out of this? Right? You just want to go in with your pajamas and just yeah. chill. And it's like, well, the reason why you hate it so much is because it's not real. Yeah. And we want to get real on a date. You want to get real as far as whatever, a real connection, a real dynamic in some way. And there's nothing more real than if someone says something and it doesn't kind of sit yeah. well. So then bring it up, bring it up and talk about it. You know? Yeah. So I think that moves it into real, real, a real connection pretty quick. And then my question to go back to something you were saying before is like, how do you know when you're on a date? I've gone on so many dates and I'm like, eh. That was fine. I'm happy if I never hear from this person again. But like, when do you know that you should give someone a longer chance? Because I feel like I know my intuition, but obviously I'm still single. So I don't know. Slow, slow burn. Meaning yeah. anything exciting and, and like, whoa, like chemistry and, and at first sight and like really intense. Any intensity is a red flag. Yeah. Write that down, guys. Anything intense, like really intense, really quickly will never last it's not sustainable it's yeah. infatuation and infatuation is the very thing that often hooks us in those subconscious blocks and wounds that i was talking about before uh -huh. it's what hooks us it feels familiar on some level there's some enamor enamoring that happens because on some level this feels familiar it feels exciting yes you can be physically attracted purely physically to someone for sure but the the pull of what feels like the chemistry that instant chemistry that we think we should have because of Hollywood is really usually a red flag because it's like hooking into your wounds, your, your patterns that you need to correct. We call it tikkun, right? From a Jewish perspective, it's called tikkun. Now, we're all doing tikkun, right? But we don't want to have that as the primary attractor, which is that, 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 that wound that I come from. Because you're going to feel like you're going to have a lot of reactivity to each other. Yeah. And a lot of people get into very intense reactive fighting down the line and it doesn't work and it's very difficult. And then the, the chemistry and the, the looks and all of that just fall away very quickly. What we're looking for is compatibility. We're looking for friendship. Do you enjoy each other's company? And you're looking for, are you interested in getting to know this person? And going for a slow build, like a slow burn, meaning, yeah, it was, it was nice. It was a good date. Not, no reason not to go out again, right? Nice person, nice person, nice guy, nice woman. We're compatible. We're aligned, right? You want to use your head first rather than the body. And we, everything makes sense on paper. And I'm going to go out. If you have a repulsive feeling, ooh, okay, drop it. 
if you're neutral, keep going. Keep going. How for long like, do you keep going for though? It depends <laughs> on the person. It depends on which system you're in, but around five, four or five dates. But how as long, like, it, it, can't after like people say three, do you think three is enough? Three for sure is like, do I want to get to know this person or not for okay. sure. But if the person's really, really aligned and there's no reason to drop it and you're not getting negative, like if you say like, I can't like, uh, it, it means because you're already experiencing something negative. So if you're doing that, like, it's already like, I can't like, Ugh, like I don't want to see this person, then leave. But is that self sabotage? How do you no. know sabotaging? If, if your pattern is, okay, this is really important, guys. If your pattern is that you constantly do that or continuously do that, a pattern is like two to three times that you're doing that pattern, then it might be a pattern in you that is a self sabotage pattern. So if you notice it, my first thing when I diagnose, like I'm more like a dating surgeon than a dating coach, we get to the root of like what might be standing in your way. And my first question to you will be, what are your patterns in dating? Well, what do you mean? I just don't meet the right guys. There's no good guys out there. What do you mean? The next person your age in your city is getting good guys. So how could there be no good guys? All right, there, there's good guys in every city. Like if I, I deal with a lot with women. And, uh, and so then we look more deeply under the hood, so to speak, yeah. right? We, we look, what's going on there? What is really going on? And, uh, the first, first thing is what's your pattern. So if your pattern is I'm dumping the, my dates, I'm the one that dumps them. That's a pattern. If, if you're attracting the wrong kind of person, I like always attract the unavailable person, the emotionally unavailable person. That's a pattern. If, if it's, I'm attracting them, but I can't get past one and done or two and done and three and done, right? Like I can't go deeper in the connection. That's a pattern. And each of those patterns will often hint to a type of a self sabotage, uh, you know, pattern that is, is connected to a wound, right? Right. There's some sort of belief system or wound that's underlying that pattern that we want to look uh -huh. at. Is that the reason people aren't married? We can't say that I'm not God. I don't know. And the proof, this is really important. So people don't get depressed. The, the proof that it's not because we're broken, that we're single. I got married very late in life. So I went through this really, I really know it from the inside, but the proof that you're not broken or there's nothing wrong with you is that there are plenty we're talking hundreds of thousands millions of couples that are really toxic and dysfunctional that are married uh -huh. so you see that there's many and it's true i know people usually laugh when i say that but there's plenty of couples that are toxic that are married so you you have to see that it's not based on how healthy you are how lovable you are there's tons of people that get married are they happy i have no right. idea but that marriage is not the the indicator or yeah. the prereq you know like for for whether someone's healthy or not healthy. I mean, yes, you can get both on both sides. Yeah. Right. So, but I will say that I do believe we're obligated to do this deeper inner effort of looking inside because that is what we're on the planet for. We're on the planet to achieve our potential. Yeah. And part of your potential is brought out as a, what I call a mirror moment through your patterns. If you want to know what your tikkun is, look at your patterns in life. And that is absolutely a perfect segue for Yom Kippur, right? Because Yom Kippur this week da -da -da, I like that. is a, is about we're looking at your patterns and your pain points yeah. and your challenges in your life and what are the things that keep repeating in my life that are i'm the common denominator of those patterns if you have patterns in your life you're the common denominator mm -hmm. right i've said this to you i remember saying this mm -hmm. at starbucks to you right so so if you're the common denominator you have to say what am i doing to help create this pattern even if i'm not aware of it what am i doing i'm doing something that i'm not aware of you know about blame. we don't blame ourselves don't go into self-blame and judgment that'll just keep you stuck Right. Any judgment and self blame keeps you stuck, right? But I want to say, take responsibility. And I want to say, it's interesting I do that. It's interesting that it's my pattern. I wonder what that, where that's coming from. I wonder what I really feel about marriage, or I wonder what I really feel about love. Like, am I really open to receiving love? Am I really feel, do I really feel worthy of receiving love? Do I really think a high quality man or woman is going to like love me? Do, if, and, and if you be really ruthlessly honest with yourself. And if you don't feel that really, then that will often be a block that stands in the way of attracting a high quality person and you'll, you'll attract safe people. So people that you feel better than or that you want to fix. So all the rescuers out there, yay, right? The rescuers play it safe because they want to feel like they're safe. They're, they're, they're better than on some level, they can help someone else, but really they get totally rejected and feel abandoned because that person can never be there for them in the first place. Right. Uh, why, don't, why don't they subconsciously attract someone that is their equal? I don't feel worthy of it. Yeah. So what's like a first step people can do to kind of break out of that pattern? We've got some good questions coming in. Okay. Okay. 
um, so what can we do to break out of that pattern? Yeah. The number like a one, first easy step. Number one is honesty. Honesty with yourself. People don't like to be honest because they beat themselves up afterwards. Uh -huh. So I, I can't acknowledge what's going on because then I feel so bad. Like I get to beat myself up. It's my fault. So yeah. no beating yourself up. We want to go in with the approach of compassionate curiosity. Without compassionate curiosity, you cannot change or grow anything. Right. right? Compassionate curiosity. Isn't that interesting? I do that. Wow. Right. That's the approach. Isn't that interesting? That's number one. And number two is we want to find, we want to learn. This is what I teach people over nine weeks. So we can't do it in two minutes, but you want to tune in to where, what do I really feel about love and about myself being loved? And where do I feel that in my body? So we want to go, the subconscious will express itself in the body. Uh -huh. So once you have that pit in your stomach or the constriction in your chest, or there's some butterflies. You want to speak to those parts of you because they're aspects of your subconscious that express through your body. And what do we do typically if we're in the conscious mind? We yeah. ignore it. We push it down. We suppress it. I, oh, it's so stupid. Why have I got that pit in my stomach? Get over it. Just go have fun. Oh my gosh, I used to kill people. Like, just go have fun on a date and then you have this pit in your stomach. Like, so yeah. that's, there's two different parts of us. So we have to learn how to have a dialogue between what we're aware of and the pit in our stomach or the body, for example, yeah. right? And that dialogue is what will start to heal and resolve it so that the pit will just start to unravel and dissolve and won't be there anymore. And you can change it really fast. Uh -huh. It can change in, in a few weeks, as long as you're practicing it, yeah. you know? And again, the most important thing is when we have an experience in our, in, our inter, in our inner world, you have a certain feeling. It's not the feeling that's ever the problem. It's not the pit in the stomach or the nerves. It's how you respond to that, that either heals it or makes it more intense. How we respond to ourselves is the answer. Yeah. People don't realize that. They really think that it's the feeling, but yeah. it's not. It's the response to the feeling, yeah. right? So, yeah. First of all, Jackie does the best exercise with this that you literally have to do with her to like really get yeah. it, but that's like a good thing for you. But my question is, so like there's a lot of uh, societal pressures, parental pressures. I get like, so I've been doing the work with you and I, I know what we've done to help me kind of rethink that. But then I have like the voices of my parents or other people making me again, feel bad and judgmental for being still single and all that stuff. So how can we navigate separating those voices when we truly agree with them maybe or feel what they're saying? Like, how do we kind of like separate it? from like trying to work on our thoughts? Great question and really, really common. If I throw something at you, like a piece of trash, do you have to catch it? No. No, what can you do? You can step aside, you can let it fly by you. So once you start to build up your inner space of your, within yourself and your inner sense of self, and you start to build that more and more, you end up seeing other people's comments as a reflection of them truly, rather than have it resonate with a wound in you and then take it into us. That's what happens when someone throws out a judgment. We already have a wound. Let's say I don't feel good enough or I feel unlovable or something like that. I already have that inside of me. So someone now throws a judgment at me that somehow resonates with that wound and I haven't dealt with the wound and I haven't looked at the wound and I don't want to acknowledge the wound and I kind of keep pushing it back into the subconscious, which means there's a disconnect inside of me that I don't want to acknowledge. And when someone throws a judgment like a spear or a piece of trash or something at me, I catch it and, it and it resonates with that wound, right? It, 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 I take it into me and that's why we feel bad. We feel bad because we already feel bad. We're just pretending we don't. And then it, as you start to, sh and the reason I know this is because I've seen hundreds of people as they shift that feeling and they don't feel bad. My most favorite calls, I just said this actually last night on the group call. Some of my favorite calls after they finish my program is they'll call me up and go, Jackie, I just got rejected. It was the worst day ever. And I'm completely fine. I don't care. I'm like amazing. I feel like so positive and happy. And they're like, they're literally blown away that, that six months ago, they would have been a mess for two yeah. weeks, right? Like they would, have, they would have felt so bad about themselves. And this time they were like, I could care less. I'm like, great, like clarity, great. Like they, they could yeah. care less. They saw it as great. This person d dumped me, but this person just got clarity that I'm not his wife or, or husband and, and said, no, okay, great. So, so but when, when you don't feel good about yourself and someone dumps you, Mm -hmm. You take it as I'm not good enough. Mm -hmm. I'm not lovable. Yeah. And so that's because it's your wound. I hope, that, I hope I'm making sense. I hope this helps people yeah. rather than, oh, I'm good. Like if this person got clarity, fine. Like it's not about me. It's not about my lovability. Yeah. 
It's not about my worth. Yeah. And it's just about clarity that this is not the right match, both yeah. ways, men and women. So we really need to do this inner work. And I can guarantee you it will only help you in later in life, in marriage or as a parent or whatever. It's only going to help you. Right. So we have to take responsibility for what's inside of us and our reactions. And we have to be able to do some healing around it. And that's part of your tikkun. I love it. I feel like we can ask, do one more question. I'm looking at the questions now. Um, okay. So what, okay. So why, and this is a question I've asked a few times to you, to other people, you know, some people get married earlier than others. And like, I think, you know, this story well from yourself personally. Oh yeah. So, why do some people get married earlier and why does it take forever for some other people? So again, if we want to zoom out, I always come from the spiritual perspective, right? If we want to zoom out to what are we doing here on the planet? We're here to become the best versions of ourselves, not compared to anyone else, compared to where you came from, where you're at and where you're going. And God loves us. God wants us to become the best version of ourselves and he will create situations and design our life in order for that to happen. Now, some people need to do more work outside of marriage to become their best version of themselves. And some people need to do more work inside of marriage. Marriage is just a vehicle. Marriage is just a vehicle to do some work, inner work. I mean, it's amazing and it's wonderful and you love each other and you have a bestie to go through life with. And it's a lot, a lot of positives in marriage. Otherwise, we would never do it. We would never do it. We would never bind ourselves to one person forever. Um, so, so there's a lot of positives in it. But what happens in marriage is it's, like, it's a mirror and you get to see yourself, the good, the bad, the ugly. And you get to choose how do I respond to that? Do I use it to work on myself or not? That's what marriage is. Mm -hmm. Some cutie little cuties need to do that from 19, right? 20, 21, 22. Like when they're young, they need to start yeah. young and they grow inside of marriage together. That's the best path for them. Others need to do it more outside of marriage. And then when they get married, they're going to fly because they're starting at a higher level, right? Because they've developed themselves outside of marriage. Now, I think men find it harder to develop outside of marriage than women. I think women are naturally more in tune and, and, and gravitate to that growth, uh, to that, to that healing, that growth. Uh, it, it's, you know, it's, it's a real, it's a real problem as people get older. And if you're a man, please go and get some mentorship and therapy and whatever, because we, the women are, the women are, and it's, it's not that there's something wrong with you. Again, I think people don't do it because either they don't believe in it or you, they have a bad therapist experience, which is very common. Um, so you have to pick a good one. You have to pick one usually that does something at the subconscious level, not a talk therapist who do somatic experiencing or IFS or uh, hypnosis or something that's deeper, right? That, that's why the changes happen usually, usually. Um, but essentially, that's really the answer, that you're single by design, not by punishment. My last and the Okay, the design that. is about becoming your your full potential and uh and and that we're obligated to do that work so wherever you're at whether you're single or you're married look inside do the work and let the outcome be up to god when he brings it the right time mm -hmm. right it'll happen and some I, most of my dating life my husband was married so everyone was giving me lots of feedback and what you're doing right what you're doing wrong mm -hmm. and most of the time there was no option to marry my husband he was married he had, to, he had to get divorced so it could be also that your other half isn't ready yeah yeah wow okay i mean that kind of answered my question is there any like last like note you want to leave people with because like i think we get excited and like ready after the new year and then like two weeks go by and then we go back to our patterns and i feel like some people feel like they've done all the lessons they've done all the challenges and we get very negative about hope for this coming year so I, I do like the single by design. I feel like that's a really strong note, but is there one like last thing for people if they're gonna, you know, you know, start going in a spiral in a few weeks to like really not give up? Stay in the present. What, what kills us is despair. Despair is the enemy. Um, people are writing really good yeah. questions. Guys, yeah. if you wanna just DM me, DM me in my DMs and I'll answer them if you, cause I'm, we're gonna get off in a minute. So DM, just cop, like try and write it, just go onto my DMs and, and DM yeah. me. Um, Despair is the enemy. We are not allowed. To, despair is forbidden in, from a Jewish perspective. Do you know that? It's forbidden. You're not allowed to go there because it's not reality. There's yeah. never, you, you, we only despair usually when we project into the future. I was going to be a cat lady in my apartment and die and no one would find me. And I was going to just like, the stench was going to get too bad and people would find me dead. That's where I went in my head when I was single at some very dark moments. Yeah. And it, this just, it just never happens, right? As in like your worst case scenario in your head doesn't happen. And the only value of doing that is projecting into the future, the worst case scenario that I'm going to feel despair now. So I would say the advice is to stay in the present, stay in the present 
and stay with anything's possible tomorrow. Your past is not a predictor of your future. Mm -hmm. People say, well, it hasn't happened till now. I'm giving up because it hasn't happened. Well, what do you mean? It could happen tomorrow. No, nope, it hasn't happened till now. So who's made, who made you God? And that's the final thing I'll leave off is leave it up to God. Let go, let God means, which we just went through Rosh Hashanah. I really want you, Hashem, as my king, meaning you're in charge. You're in charge of my life, which means I'm going to do all my effort. I'm not passive, but I'm going to put in my effort and then I'm going to surrender the outcome to you. Meaning I know that you know the whole picture. I don't know the whole picture. So I'm just going to do my best with what I know. And then I'm going to let go and let myself off the hook as far as like, I can't be in control because I'm not in control, right? We all know, right? There's one of my favorite lines from a, from a rabbi that I, I, I like said, there's no such thing as an inferiority complex. You are inferior. Yeah. Like we know that we know that we we're not in control. We know that we're inferior. Leave it up to God. He's not inferior. He knows everything. He loves you. He wants you to grow. That's what we're doing this week. Make the call to someone if you need to make the call, right? As in to make amends with someone take those steps with your growth this week and it will only pay off in the new year in enormous, enormous amounts. Amen. From your mouth to God's ears. Amen. And you should have a so Hasima Tova. Yes. Should be sealed for good this year. Okay. Have a wonderful year to everyone and everyone should just see such revealed goodness in, the, in your year and, uh, and really be able to keep growing and trusting and trusting that there's a purpose and a plan to your life and that you're lovable. Wow, I feel like I needed to hear this today, Jackie. I'm gonna cry. <laughs> okay, thank hard. you guys. We're gonna save <laughs> this. So share this with your friends after we put this up. Thank you guys for joining. And thank Thanks, you, guys. Jackie. Okay. Bye. Bye. See you.